And we're talking about something San Francisco is famous for, not the Golden Gate Bridge or Coit Tower, but constant car break-ins. It seems to be a universal experience for tourists and locals alike. Some people have gone as far as to leave notes in their car, bluntly telling thieves they don't have anything inside. Tonight, police are out with a new plan of attack. They say they'll be setting out bait cars to reel thieves in. By design, we want the people who are breaking into cars to be caught. And bait cars, we believe, will do that. Well, police have responded to more than 13,000 car break-ins so far this year. And on paper, that's actually down slightly compared with last year's numbers. But honestly, a lot of people don't even bother to report it anymore. And while police may be changing up their strategy now, why haven't they been able to do more before? Well, we sent Wilson Walker to ask them. Well, we, want, we walked up to the painted ladies to, you know, look at them. And then we just came back to the car. And they took us our passports, my computer, <laughs> my iPod. All the way from Argentina, the Molina family stopped for one quick landmark, only to find themselves in the middle of a more notorious San Francisco postcard. And having just driven up from Los Angeles, no, they did not see the warnings. No, we didn't think because we, we went around places and it all seemed so nice. And I, we were talking about how calm the city is and how, you know, nice and walking down there and I heard suddenly a smash uh, like a broken glass. And then On the other side of the park, Noemi Aguinaldo was watching and shouting as thieves dove into her car. It did not make any difference. And then the lady here was honking and then I was shouting at him, hey, hey, don't do that. And it's like, for as long as San Francisco has suffered through this era of car break-ins, poor Alamo Square here has been right in the middle of it. And the question we often hear is why can't they stop this, especially in a specific location like this one? And that is a question police hear a lot as well. You know, it, it's, it's a challenge. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's something that we're constantly trying to get innovative, having new ideas, new ways of trying to combat it. My Lieutenant goal, Scott goal, Ryan heads SFPD's goal. auto burglary response. He says the department does have ongoing operations targeting hotspots like Alamo Square, but they have to be careful about how they intervene. So I see a car flying up in the air. He tries to get up and run, and another guy, you know, grabs him and hits him, knocks him down on the ground. One example came back in 2018 when undercover officers were right on top of a break in. Only the suspects tried to drive their way out of an arrest. Ryan says police now assume that will be the reaction. They're going to go down the street the wrong way down the street, or they're going to go. And we're all talking about these are all places you're talking about that are all highly visited people by tourists and everything like that. So we really have to be tactful about how we do our investigations. So what police usually try to do is reverse engineer the case by putting other pieces together, like spotting crew members who are casing cars or taking possession of the stolen property after the burglary. Intervening then, police say, comes with less risk, but it takes more help. Good thing this lady here got the plate number. Now, a lot of people number. say the license plates won't help because the car or the plate is stolen. No, the more information that we get, the, the, honestly, the, the more it's going to help us. Even a stolen plate can help tie multiple burglaries to one group of suspects. And then there's this. This is where my AirPods are supposed to be. No, maybe my, it's my iPod. Police say tracking down those floating icons depends on officer availability at any given moment, but it can happen. Call us, let us know. Um, we have a case just last week that there were items that were, were able to be tracked and led to a great arrest. I mean, we have those happen. Looking at the numbers year to date, you can see 2017 was the big surge. The pandemic years meant fewer targets on the street. And this year, the numbers are trending down a bit. Ryan says his goal is a sustained downward trend over years. And yes, he knows the numbers are still high and people are angry about it. I understand the frustration. I really, really do. What I would say is that us in law enforcement are really picking and choosing when we interdict. So the last thing I would want, you know, as frustrated as people are to themselves interdict, we've seen when that's happened several times and it, it just, it has potential to get violent and everything else. And we just don't want to see that happen. So we're lucky they didn't take everything, I think.
If you've ever just come across the aftermath of one of these burglaries, you know that any single one of them can be heartbreaking, and not just for the victims, but for the city as a whole. It makes you not want to come again, and that's really sad because it's such a beautiful city, and we were so excited to be here. Making arrests, of course, only part of this. As for what comes next, that was discussed during the announcement at the Palace of Fine Arts here is District Attorney Brooke Jenkins. They have to learn, not only will the police arrest, but once that case is filed, something meaningful will happen on the back end to serve as a deterrent for future behavior. That, she said, will take time, but the strategy we are told is changing. New techniques are on the way. Time will tell how effective it all is in solving a problem that has just become part of the San Francisco landscape.